Journey is one of the best games I've ever played, if you can call it a game. With the rise in indie gaming, we're all familiar with the idea of walking simulators, but when Journey came out in 2012, it wasn't something I'd experienced before. And that's probably the best way to describe Journey, it's an experience. The game begins and you control a cloaked figure standing in an open desert with a platform in front of you, and this is all the tutorial Journey needs to teach you the game's only mechanics. Walking, jumping, and interacting with the world by singing new life into abandoned scraps of cloth. After this, Journey leaves you alone to explore a gorgeous landscape containing a crafted, linear experience that feels open and free. You look around to see desert on all sides, but in one direction there's a mountain in the distance. There's no instruction, no waypoint marker, but you see the mountain and you head towards it. Not because you're supposed to, but because you want to. It's the defining feature of the landscape and it naturally draws you towards it. It's fantastic level design and throughout Journey this is how you advance. You progress not by heading towards where you're supposed to go, but by heading to where you want to go and as it turns out those two locations are the same. This is just one of the reasons Journey keeps you so invested. There's no user interface, inventory or additional abilities that would act as a barrier between the user and the game. You don't stare at a mini-map, you search the environment. You don't look at ability stats, you stay with your character. There is a meter that shows how much longer you can stay in the air from a jump, but it's built into the runes on your cape. It never diverts your attention away from the game because it blends into the visual style, and more importantly because the information is shown where you are already looking, on your character in the centre of the screen. When that game company designs a game, they start with the emotion and feelings a player should experience, and the mechanics and world are built from that. It's why their games are always so vibrant and evocative, but also elegantly simple. Journey is no different, with a world that transcends being beautiful and moves on to the sublime. The environment and architecture of Journey give a sense of awe, a power that has no dominion over us. I'll veer away from Kant because I'm not really qualified for that and I'm probably misinterpreting him anyway. But this game is about the sublime and a sense of scale, the size of your character in the vast expanse of desert, your current experience compared to a long history and even the way you interact with the world, the notes you emit blending in with the music in the background and becoming one small part of a much greater whole. It's common in video games to make the player feel powerful and important, but Journey does the exact opposite. The world is important, and you're just there for the ride. The background music is gorgeous, but not intrusive. Often the game elects to have none whatsoever and just uses sound effects from the environment. The music is also dynamic. Faster paced sequences where you fly through the landscape are matched with upbeat and energetic music. But, it's not just the art and music that make Journey what it is. At the end of the day, it's a video game, so any artistic details can only be properly experienced if they're given a platform through solid gameplay. Journey absolutely nails this. I said jumping was one of the three mechanics, but really flying is a more accurate term, because traditional jumping is all done for you. A jump ability isn't necessary 99% of the time, and so Journey cuts it out. It's a concept that eco-developer Fumito Ueda called Design by Subtraction. Removal of all unnecessary elements that don't fit what a game needs to be. The absence of extraneous mechanics allows the ones that are present to be perfected. Something something quality over quantity. When you walk around, you can almost feel the ground underneath you and the environment around you. Flying has natural movement and you definitely won't be failing any platforming elements because of the controls. Sliding through sand is the most satisfying movement in any video game I've ever played. Bold statement, but I'll defend it. It's also important where this sliding is introduced. At the beginning, Journey has you moving slowly and tentatively, but that changes around the midway point, a section that probably feels like the end of the beginning. You rebuild a bridge by interacting with discarded cloth, find and free creatures made from the same material, and then the game becomes more energetic. Movement is freer because the magic carpet creatures recharge your cape by being near you. The hilly desert turns into a steep descent and you spend a good few minutes sliding through the world at exhilarating speed. You move from an empty desert to buildings and creatures, and now that you have, the game feels vibrant and full of life while you look across a city skyline. Is this not the story of an emerging civilization? We've seen direction without instructions, linearity without limitation, and now we've got story without storytelling. The experience of Journey involves an immersive world, emotional investment, and even a story arc, all without any dialogue or text. 
The world is created through visuals and music. Deserted ruins buried in sand don't need a voiced explanation for a story that we already know well. The history of a past civilization lost and forgotten by time. History becoming legend, legend becoming myth, and so on. Where most games would have cutscenes, Journey has cave paintings. Well, they are cutscenes, but by changing the artistic style to one that's two-dimensional and much simpler, it comes across as something that our character could be looking at. Cutscenes traditionally take you out of the game by using a different perspective or narrator. Here, it feels like you're still in the moment, but just looking at drawings on a wall. The drawings serve to mark key moments in the story of Journey, where the game moves from initial exploration and new beginnings, to growth and reimagining the civilization, then living in the world, followed by the beginning of the end, marked by moving the game underground. The mood of the gameplay matches the story of the world. Your character lives out history, just at a much faster pace. The two stories sync up when Journey reaches a final and seemingly insurmountable struggle. Will our hero find a way, or join the abandoned architecture as a lost relic of the past? You don't need text or narration when the gameplay writes a story through its own medium. I may not finish Journey knowing exactly what happened, but I also don't think that's necessary. A story can be more interesting because of the unknown. Journey relays the information, never really breaking the first-person perspective of its narrative. Once again, there's a focus on having us experience what the character experiences with no obstruction. When Journey does take its darker turn, it replaces the bright, warm environment of the opening desert with the cold and snow. You were aiming for a mountain all along, so it makes sense, but it still packs a punch when the game transforms into this. The snow is heavier, you walk slower, the strong wind forces you back, and all around movement is more effort. You can't even slide down the slopes anymore. It gives a sense of overwhelming difficulty without ever actually being hard to play. By this point, I was already so absorbed in the game that every heavy step was like a punch to the gut, with a real sense that it might all be over, and that the journey had come to a bitter end. There's another interesting feature that Journey includes, which is its online play. Other players can appear in your game and travel along with you if they happen to be in the same part of the game at the same time. Pressing circle near other players recharges their capes, and this is the only way you can interact. Imagine that, an online game where players can only be wholesome and cooperative. It doesn't really change Journey whether or not someone does arrive in your game, but it is interesting when it happens. As I'm writing this video, the Epic Game Store still only says that Journey is coming soon, with no official release date announced, but it is going to be in 2019, and I have to praise whoever at Epic had the idea to get Journey on their platform as they try to make themselves the go-to online store for indie developers. If you haven't played Journey, I can't recommend enough that you do. And when you do, sit down and play through this game in one sitting. It takes two or three hours, but I guarantee you this is the way you want to experience it. The first time I played Journey, I clicked to start the game at about 11pm one evening, just thinking about having something to do before getting into bed. And for the next three hours, nothing else in the world even existed. I was completely and utterly absorbed in the music, the visuals, the world that Journey creates for you, and when I finally put the controller down, I was blown away. And tired, because it was now 2 o'clock in the morning, and I hadn't noticed that happen. For me, the measure of any new art game or walking simulator is how well they compare to Journey, and so far, not one has really come close. The visual and sound design of the game are incredible. I really can't emphasise enough how beautiful Journey is to look at and listen to, but it's the combination of the art with polished gameplay and a story that's told through the medium rather than in spite of it that puts Journey on a pedestal as one of the greatest video games of all time.